Welcome to Culmination, where we're not experts, but we sure have a lot to say. In the process of becoming our best self, I have with me the aspiring journalist, Jack Wolf to discuss networking. And with that said, let's get started. So, Jack, big money question. What is networking? Uh, to me, how I would think of describing networking, anyone can always, like, use it in a business sense and where you kind of mingle and you try to find a person that might give you like a strategic advantage in the workplace. But Mm. to me, networking can kind of uh, go farther than that and just be in your everyday life, trying to make connections, uh, be it like, you know, platonic, romantic, or even like in the business sense, Mm. Uh, just being able to reach out and like find connection to other people. Yeah, I think that's a great way to start the episode because we'll dive into all that. So let's see right, real quick. Um, so I guess let's get into, let's talk about the business sense first because mm-hmm. obviously that's kind of the most common way of talking about networking it's like well obviously you gotta like meet this person and this person so how does it all work um and like thinking of like a business sense of networking uh i'd have to say it definitely just requires well i think in order just to network in general it does require like certain attributes uh Mm -hmm. in order to go through with it And mainly it is just kind of like, it doesn't necessarily like require confidence, I would say, because it does require like a little bit, but that's not like the main thing. It's more about making the attempt at connecting with other people. You know, you can be brave for like three seconds and Mm -hmm. like reach out to someone and then they might, you know, say like, oh no, I'm not really interested uh and you know then that's it like you know you may have had like a whole bunch of courage doing that but that was only one person but you know it's more about keep like continually reaching out to other people like you know if one says no you go to the next one and like in a business sense i mean that's the best way in order to make sure that you know it continues to grow i mean you wouldn't be able to find all of the guests on your podcast if you didn't reach out to people and i'm sure some people might have said no i wouldn't want to be on the podcast which is fine but you wouldn't find the next guest if you stopped asking right yeah that's that's actually a really good point because um i remember when i first started the show and I I would basically try to compile a list of, um, you know, like all these different people just because when I started, I wanted to have like, I think it was 20 people that I, that I wrote out, like just a whopping giant list of episodes just because it's like, well, I don't want to run out anytime soon. So I'm going to do this. So. I mean, in in a lot of my earlier episodes, it was more of my closer friends. Although, like, not all of them, obviously. It was also, like, it had to do with the timing. So, like, if people were readily available or Mm -hmm. if I had a specific topic that I wanted to cover first, which needed to be, like, probably, like, a bigger idea, like, identity that needed to be one of the earlier episodes just because it's huge. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, it took me till episode 26 to make confidence, so. <laughs> I don't really know what I'm doing there. Uh, but, you know, uh, it was just interesting how I kind of, I did have to network. I had to, even though they were basically already all of my friends, oh, there's yeah. not many people who were guests that I had, like, no connection to um, in some way. But I still had to, like, think about it. I had to think about, like, topics like, okay, here's the comfort zone episode. Who's going to be best for that? I want to do assertiveness. Who's the best for that? So, I don't know. You you had to kind of think about it. And 
each guest had their own take on something. Some were better at explaining other things, like um, my friend Grace, uh, she has her own business, so I had her do the Opportunity episode. So, she's best for that. Um, any experiences when you had to kind of network like that? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, that's kind of you utilizing your network of people. And, mm. you know, everyone kind of has a pool of people, whether they uh, know it or not, it is there. I mean, at like, you know, at the very least, you will have your family that's with you or your friends. Right. And through those connections, you can help meet more people. And, you know, you're right. There are some people who are better uh, utilized, like in your network for certain things than like others. Like, um, you know, uh, you wouldn't ask me what it's like to like want to be an engineering major uh, because, you know, I'm not an engineering major. But, right, yeah. you know, you'll know someone else and then that's, you know, more fitting person. And that's kind of the benefit of always trying to reach out because, you know, by finding these people, you get more opportunities and more like a well-rounded sense scope of like your surroundings. And like each person can kind of give something that maybe the other one can't, but by right, having yeah. that network of people, it's like, you know, you kind of get everything. Mm -hmm. And obviously my story was, I mean, it's interesting on its own right, but in a sense, it's kind of a result of my work of networking, because like, I didn't tell a story of how I reached out to all of these people to begin with. Like, like I right. said, they were already my friends. So yeah, I had to come in contact with them. But well, mm. You know, I guess that's not exactly true because I still had to like, there were some people where I had to not necessarily wrestle the idea with, but like mm -hmm. try to convince them to do it. And they mm -hmm. ended up do, doing it. And I didn't like hold them at gunpoint or anything. I was just like, right. <laughs> no, like, I think you'd be the best for this. Like, I don't know, just consider it. And they're like, hmm, all right. All right. So I guess there's also maybe a negotiation component sometimes um, well what is it um well this is uh a little anecdote mm -hmm. like it's it's weird to like kind of categorize it as this but like even just like making a friend or whatever you could think of in the sense of like oh well you know at some point you had to like make the connection but not only that you have to keep maintaining it Yes. Which that's the other thing about networking is you could reach out to like a hundred people and then there might be like 50 people that you connected to and, you know, you, like you kind of get and you kind of have that relationship and mm -hmm. then there might be 20 that you actually maintain. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what was it like uh, how I met Sakani, who was one of your guests in an earlier episode. Uh, I remember it was in seventh grade and I was trying to find a spot to sit at for lunch and then I just kind of sat where he was. Uh, and, you know, we, then we kind of talked and what made me think about this when you said negotiation was the fact that I had to buy him a cookie in order to oh. sit at the table. <laughs> You literally had a fee to freaking yeah. sit with your friend. In my defense, I didn't. I didn't buy him the cookie initially. It was, but it was like over the course of a week of just sitting there. I was like, "Fine, I'll buy you the cookie." What a sellout! And, and yeah, so that you know, obviously, um, you know, Sakana and I are now really good friends. But even then, like. You know, it's not just the fact that I bought the cookie that, like, we became friends, right? It's, you know, constantly reassuring the other person, uh, like, you know, that you're invested in that, like, relationship with a person. 
Mm-hmm. And also the it, cookie kind of became a joke. Am I correct? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, I like, we could always say is like, Oh, you know, well you bought me a cookie and that's why that's the only reason I'm your friend. <laughs> it's like, Oh, okay. Well, I think we've gone past the 75 cent cookie. I'm pretty sure we've, uh, we have more debt to each other. I still own like 35 bucks. I need to do that. <laughs> Thank God. Are you only worth 75 cents to Sikandi? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but I think that's also, I think that is like the maintaining of networks, but like reassurance. And I think that helps. Reinforcement too, yeah. Yeah, that like helps build uh, like relationship and connection to people like uh it's harder to be vulnerable at least in my personal case it's it's hard to kind of open up and be vulnerable with people and when you make those connections you can't you can't be completely shallow when you're trying to like reach out to other people this right. is this is like in the more personal sense of like yeah. trying to find people less than like the business end because business you can be as shallow as you want <laughs> you know <sighs> most of it is just most of that end is more about you know your uh your tactfulness and what yeah, you have to offer business is more of like everybody else is also in that business mindset so like you're not exactly reaching out for friends. You're literally reaching out for an answer or some yeah. sort of contact to help you with something. Exactly. Yeah, so it's very different than this. This, like, relationships and friendships are more of, like, there's more heart to it. So with that said, I'll let you continue. Um, but no, so, like, if you... It is, like, kind of like a give-and-take type thing when you're, like, reaching out... Uh, uh -huh to people like you have to give a little bit of something you can't just be like oh let's hang out and like not reveal anything about yourself uh, yeah uh and what is it well in the more going back to like a business side my family opened up a spa down in south carolina which is where i currently am living uh and just yesterday, uh, they had kind of like uh, a wedding, not a wedding party, because I, I understand how that sounds. It's like a group of like local business owners that all kind of revolve around, you know, wedding planning or like, uh -huh. you know, something within that realm. And, you know, that's like the definition of like, networking when you're trying to meet people like uh people were giving each other cards they were talking laughing having a good time uh and not only that but like just kind of uh what is it finding connection with other people like oh you live down there i'm just over there uh you know it like and the limitation of like reaching out to people is that you know not everyone's gonna bite uh you know sometimes you're just not that compatible yeah. with the person you can't find common ground uh and to you know just to kind of like fight that you just have to keep going on to the next person and then you'll maybe find that like i remember my dad or telling me my grandfather who worked at like hallmark sales uh -huh. um you know you would make calls every day and just before he would like you know clock out it's like i'm gonna make one more call and by doing that you know it's rolling the dice again then maybe you'll find you know exactly what you're looking for uh, it's like be, to to want to network and to meet other people. It's a very like 
you have to be an opportunist Mm -hmm. and you have to like see kind of like openings or connections with other people. I mean, that's what uh, is happening with going on to college uh, in a strange sense. Like you can reach out via internet by going like, oh, you're going to, you know, so-and-so college and I'm going there too. It's like, oh, well, we should hang out. And like, yeah, that is like probably the best thing uh, that like, you know, you could do, which is You've just... been doing that a lot, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've done it so many times, like, you know, just reaching out, reaching out. And, you know, not not everyone, uh, whatever, is um, like a hit. Sometimes it's like, oh. Not up to party or standards. Not my standards, but... <laughs> No, like, again, sometimes there's just not that much common, like, oh, you know, what are you, what's your major? Oh, I'm, like, in engineering. And you go, oh, I'm in journalism. It's like, oh, okay. And then you try to find another thing, like, what are you, what's your uh, idea of fun? It's like, oh, I like to stay in. It's like, oh, well, I like to go out. And, you know, mm-hmm. eventually go, like, okay, you know, you did your best. Uh, right and and then but then you know then you might go oh my god you're a fan of uh, the marvel movies so am i you know and then that connection works Uh, but you know you wouldn't you wouldn't understand if you didn't click with one person you clicked with another person if you hadn't attempted to reach out Mm -hmm. and i think it's also it's definitely different when you're reaching out entirely on like, you know, like online Mm -hmm. because at that point it's almost your entire connection is made or broken based on like simple traits or interests versus Mm -hmm. if you actually were just thrown into a classroom with a random sample of people and mm-hmm. let's say this guy that you reached out to on Instagram or something, instead of that, he's in your class. And I oh, feel yeah. like you would have such a different connection because when you're in person, there's so much nuance to it. And mm-hmm. like, like think about like back to your story with Sakani. It's like if you were if you came into contact with Sakani via online, mm-hmm. maybe you wouldn't have become friends because you said different interests. And you were like, well, I guess this won't work. But because you had a a really weird situation where you just sat with Mm -hmm. them, that cookie became a joke. Like, Mm -hmm. that's why you became friends. And then you found common ground kind of from that, you know? No, it's different. No, yeah. I I get that. And I've seen the other end, too, where because for some context, I lived in like you know cincinnati like all throughout to like end of graduation you know since i was born Mm -hmm. uh and then i moved down to south carolina like maybe a week or two ago yeah and you know like i said i've been reaching out to people who are going to the same college as me and it just so happens to be that there was one uh guy who lives like right next to where I am currently, uh, you know, and we're both in the same dorm building, mm. uh, same floor level. He's only like a couple rooms down from me. Uh, and, you know, we're going to the same school. And so I, I talked to him and he's like, oh yeah, we should hang out and get lunch. And I did. And it is like a, it is a weird kind of development in terms of like reaching out to people yeah. online. Like if you're not doing it for like a business sense and like you're more doing it to like, you know, friendship. Yes. Uh, you know, I went to the, to the store and I was like, Oh, I kind of know what he's supposed to look like. But like I've never seen him in person. And goes, and you're going to oh. get catfished. Yeah, I know. I'm going to get catfished. It's some 73-year-old woman. Exactly. (laughs) 
It was that Jack. Uh, <laughs> but no, it like I think one of the things uh, that's kind of like interesting is that you quickly acclimate to each other. If that makes sense, like if you've had like conversations, like you know through text or whatever, mm-hmm. and you know they've been like kind of all right. Uh, as soon as you like meet in person, you know, there's obviously like the first little awkward yeah. 10, 15 minutes or whatever. But then shortly after that, you know, like, oh, okay. Like you kind of easily get into the swing of it's just the same as like talking to this person, except there aren't three little dots, uh, you know, waiting when they're typing. Right. And they're actually there. It's like fast paced too. Like and there's nuances, like there's body language and there's tone and there's mm-hmm. like I don't know, there's reactions and Oh yeah. Things. And it's a lot and I mean, you know, I can say how helpful it is, at least for me when uh, preparing for college and this move to be like reaching out to people to try to find uh you know Your connections piece. down here yeah. but at the end of the day you know it it can't be like actually like seeing the person and talking to them real time uh like there is a different uh feeling with that you know even like as close and personal as you can get, uh, there is a difference. If that makes sense. What do you mean exactly? It's a like little... hmm, okay. Well, there's a uh, one girl who's down here. Uh, I I've been like talking to her for like a little bit uh, over like text. Like down in South Carolina, she's another person who's going to the same school as me. Yeah, and you know, we like kind of already understood like our feelings towards each other, but it was a whole different thing when meeting each other in person. Not to say that like we you know we didn't like each other, but like you know, it is sort of odd sometimes to like talk to a person that you don't like no no like in yeah. a more like intimate sense but then you know just then just actually seeing them you kind of like uh what's the right word Poet. uh it's like br- it, it's brought to life like wait, it's like it's weird knowing a person like and like uh, inside and out a little bit like in terms level. Of, yeah like in that deep level without first actually meeting them in person <laughs> yeah like that's that was what i was trying to look for because you know you can like talk about like you know what your interests are and like uh you know your like thoughts and like opinions mm-hmm. and you kind of like you know that person and you can like describe that person and then you meet them in person and it's just like kind of like an odd feeling of like i know you but i ha- i've yet to have met you yeah in person well i mean have you like video called or something i mean yeah i've done like i've done that and like but there is like a difference like i guess there's right. like well obviously for, uh but yeah, so that's a little uh, personal anecdote in terms of, you know, networking or whatever. Right. <laughs> and I mean, I don't know. It is, it's crazy to me how like uh, one of our friends at work, for an example, I'll leave his name out, but, uh, you know, like he met his girlfriend online because they share yeah. like the same like mutual interest in a band and i think it's Mm -hmm. 
I don't think the band's necessarily unpopular, but it's one of those like out there bands, I guess. Um, I is forgot it? what the name is, but you know, is it's it? just like it? they met over this band on like Instagram or something, and then they started talking, and then they like formed an actual relationship online, and then I think this lasted for I don't remember the time frame, but they were like together for like quite a while until they met each other in person and when they did it was just like it was just like that it was yeah you know magical almost it was like meant to be and now like two years later they're like engaged and he he left our workplace and he's now with her where she goes to school and like living with her for a year i think and i mean it's one of those things for me as like an outsider where it's like man i'm sad that you're leaving now Mm because like I wish I had this extra month before I leave, like, to work with you. But, but if you were going to leave, this is the, this is the best way this that you're the best going. Way. To leave. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, <laughs> that. Um, <laughs> he he did it, man. Uh, he did it. And that, like, people talk about the kind of like dangers of social media and like the internet, mm-hmm. which. Uh, you know, some they're real there. I mean, there are dangers. I'm not denying that. I mean, but I think it's, I think looking at the internet is kind of like looking at the history of humanity. Mm-hmm. Like if you look at it and it's like, you know, like overall, like just everything, you know, you might be a little disgusted. You might be like horrified or like, Oh my God. What is all going on here? Uh, you know, it can be, there's some good, there's some bad, there's even some, like, evil. But it's like, if you focus in on, like, oh, that, like, if there wasn't that, you know, the person you're talking about, they wouldn't have been able to do that. Right, yeah. Uh, like, that's like kind of the more hopeful story and like you know social media it can definitely like change your perceptions of how you see people but it can also help you reach out and find connection that like geographical location wouldn't have allowed you to do right yeah like there there's definitely a lot of problems that the internet brings and on this show we've kind of talked about some of them um and they're real problems and i genuinely i mean i feel disgusted by them sometimes but Mm -hmm. like you said it's kind of like it's almost like a weird metaphor for humanity in general because there's some awful things about it and then Mm -hmm. there's some truly marvelous things about it like Mm -hmm. how innovative it is and how accessible things are Like, we live in a world where you can, if you have a single question, you can get the answer immediately, like, wherever you are through a phone. Um, Mm -hmm. And just this whole idea of social media, I mean, obviously, it causes problems where, like, people are sad or they compare themselves to others who look perfect or look like they have perfect lives. And it creates, like, a false narrative of everything. But at Mm -hmm. the same time, this is the reason why we can keep our friends like i can go to college in another state and you can go to college in south carolina and Mm -hmm. we can still hold on to our friends from ohio and exactly one of my friends moved to seattle like last year and i still am in contact with her every now and again Mm -hmm. um and she was on this show (laughs) and i made the show way after she left and you know like i Sure, like people could come around back then, back back in the day. But uh back in the day. Back in my day, you kids didn't have your stupid red in Instagram and Instagram. Um It's just crazy how we can keep all of our friends intact, but also how you're networking and you can meet all these new people that have these objectively kind of weird experiences but weird and kind of like a like whoa (laughs) like this is kind of cool 
Like I made a girlfriend online. <laughs> and, all right. Uh, that was some weird wording, but you get the point. And, no, I get it. Uh, yeah, and then you meet them in person. It's like, hey, this is pretty cool. Um, mm-hmm. And the story I said about our friend where it's just like, I mean, a story like that, that's like the kind of stuff you read online. And it's like, mm-hmm. that, that, no, that doesn't happen. Like, that's so <laughs> that's so Disney, you know? Like, Yeah. That doesn't happen. So it's really crazy when you're actually, like, witnessing the development of this happening, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I wasn't there from the beginning, but I was there for, like, a year. Yeah. Like, after they were already together, and now I see, obviously, the conclusion. Well, mm-hmm. it's not a conclusion, but he, he left, at least. Right. Um, for a good closing chapter. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I don't know. Like, I guess... I guess sometimes there are miracles. What do, what do you think about that? Um, I think, like, in terms of, like, it is just kind of, that is what happens when you, like, constantly reach out to people. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, and, like, I just kind of, like, stumbled upon, like, you know, finding, uh, you know, the, the guy I went to lunch with and, you know, the girl that I'm talking to now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just kind of like you know stumbled upon it because you know you just have to keep you know it's not like I just woke up one day and I was like you know what I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to talk to you and then yeah that's what's going to happen like you know it's just like every kind of day you just kind of go let's meet let's try to meet one more person let's you know get to know another person like an exercise right Almost. yeah like you have to it's more of like a, a practice and like you know there's been plenty of times where you just go you know this you know it's not clicking i don't think uh you know uh you know i could i'm not gonna like be have that much in common with like a gym jockey who like mm-hmm. keeps talking about pre-workout uh and so, you know, but that's like, you know, that's just because that's me and, you know, that's someone else and that's not like a compatible thing, but right. you wouldn't know that, like you would just see the name of the person. You wouldn't know that until you like try to start a dialogue. Right. Um, level one friendship level. <laughs> exactly. Level one. Um, and how should I put this? Uh, it is just like you need to keep. Sorry, that's my dog. Uh, oh. You do need to keep uh, just like talking to people. You need to try. Like that's yeah. that, at the end of the day, that's what it is. If you don't make the attempt, it's never going to happen. And. I think one of the difficulties of like networking or like being a person who strives to reach out to others is that there are times where you kind of wish you weren't the networker that you were the networked. If that yeah. makes sense. Like, like why are you always the initiator? Why don't people try to talk to you or something? Oh yeah. And that's been, you know, kind of something that I've dealt with because it's, yeah, it feel always feels too, like yeah. you put in uh, more effort to like kind of make those connections. Uh, but, you know, I think it is because it's like, it's just how you perceive it because there might've been a couple of people who have tried to make connections with you, but you just mm-hmm. might not have noticed because you didn't have to put in as much effort. Right, Whereas, like something you don't notice. Yeah, like, um, if you, if someone reaches out to you and then just like, oh, you know, what are you into? You know, you're like, oh, well, I know what I'm into. You know, like, like that's an easy way to, like, answer. But, like, if you're the one reaching out, you have to be the one to first, like, you know, almost like, you know, say, hey, I'm not a weirdo. <laughs> um, yeah. But then also... You have to find a good question 
for common ground and like you know not like oh what's your favorite color like that's not going to do anything for you right um you know it's funny i i remember this one exchange we had at work so you and i both worked at the same pizza place that's how we met mm -hmm. our our other friend too um i mean we also went to school together but um mm -hmm. because of covid and i was online and everything we mainly conversed at work and mm -hmm. There was this one like month or week where just at work I would habitually just like every time I would run into somebody I would say what's up and <laughs> you just like stopped me and I thought it was kind of rude at first but then it was like wow well, huh <laughs> so you were like you were like okay buddy hold on a second and I'm like what <laughs> and you're like ask me a different like freaking question like. Like, you, you asked me what's up, like, four times. And, like, to be fair, I wasn't asked, I wasn't, like, asking a real question. I was just, like, right. I was just making, I was basically just saying hi every time I ran into you. I didn't, like, <laughs> it's a rhetorical question, essentially. Right. <laughs> like, you're just supposed to say what's up back, and then we leave to go, like, do something else, I guess. Um, But you were, like, try asking, like, a more interesting question and i don't know it was just very like blunt and again mm -hmm. i i was like what what what's this guy talking to <laughs> right like what, what's this guy's deal huh and then afterwards i was just like thinking like well i mean even though that's not really my intention to like really mm -hmm. strike up conversation in the moment i guess he's got a point i shouldn't like just keep saying what's up <laughs> well what is it it's um for me it was like if i i don't like this whole like mentality of like you know always reaching out to people was given to me like by my dad um and you know there was a certain point where i kind of realized that if you like unless they're a complete stranger and you know the person just by starting a conversation with like an interesting question, like, you know, can make like the conversation. Like you don't always need like, you know, so I see that you're doing this. Like, you know, I see that you're making a pizza. Do you right. like Italian mm -hmm. food? Like you don't always need to do that. Like, you know, sometimes, you know, it can be perceived as blunt, but you know, you you might just uh go, you know, uh, you might like tell a joke or you might say something dumb or stupid, but mm -hmm. it kind of grabs the attention. And the reason, like, I wasn't trying to harp on you with the whole what's up thing. No, it no, was I just, know. It was just funny. <laughs> what is it? It was just that you would ask me that, like, at the beginning of the day, and I'd go, oh, you know, this happened and that happened. You know, I went to school, you know, stuff with, like, family. Yeah, and then nothing one, changed one 30 minutes later. Yeah, and then, like, 30 minutes later, you ask, like, what's up? And it's like, I already told you what's up. Like, you know, that's up. Nothing nothing more has been up since the last 30 minutes you've asked me. <laughs> that's so uh, funny, dude. So, so, yeah, I, like, you just kind of have to, like, pride yourself on, like, your questions, I guess. Like, mm -hmm. you always have to, what is it? It's, um... You kind of need to like ask questions that can then lead to other questions, and then that's how you can make a good conversation. Like, right, and also like I guess if it's not exactly reciprocated, like you know how you try to talk to somebody and their responses are like like very short answers that you can't work with. Mm -hmm. That's probably your cue to stop talking. <laughs> like how how are you doing? Good. Like okay. Like, um. Uh, anything new? No. How's but family? Even, what is it? Even yeah. then, sorry, I keep, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, but you're good. Even then, I almost do blame the person who asks the question at that point. Like, I know that sounds weird to say, but like, I think, uh, what is it? It's more like an, an exchange of, how uh, how invested you are in talking to the person. 
like if you want like if you're gonna ask like just to be blunt like a basic question you're gonna get a basic response mm, like that's fair. like you know you might you know, like no one has to put that much thought into how was your day today and so then right. you can so then the answer doesn't need as much thought of like it was good uh you know especially at work when you know people who are like your your colleagues and acquaintances but might not necessarily be like your closest friends they'll still be polite and go like you know how's your day it's like it was almost as if you were uh like doing a ritual they would go like how's your day mine was good how about yours and then they'd go oh mine was good and then you go like oh that's great and then that would be the end of it <laughs> and you would just keep doing that because it's like it's just oh we acknowledge that we both exist right yeah it's the it's the church of work um but ritual. you know like with uh like a good question uh like um what is something it something observant I, right like yeah like i keep uh i don't know why this question always lingers in my head it's a uh, is cereal soup that's like just a weird hypothetical or not even hypothetical but like that's like a conversation sorry like is cereal soup like people could say yes right and then that could be like a one-worded response but then you know you can kind of go why and then they have to think about it right you know? or like is water wet and then the, the yeah. whole group chat is destroyed by that point you know like and you know not to say that like compared to how is your day it's like you know like a, a big leap to go like is water wet but it's Ugh. better like it starts it's more creative it's more creative is um yeah well, and like say. you know if somebody's wearing like a t-shirt with like i don't know like led zeppelin on it it's like that being observant not only mm. is creative but it's also like kind of shows the other person that you notice them or like you care about them yeah. or maybe you want to know more about them so it's like do you like led zeppelin or i i like that band too or do you like mm -hmm. other rock bands like it just kind of feeds into other questions or like yeah the same is true for like if you overheard somebody saying something not necessarily that you're eavesdropping on private information but more of like Oh, I I heard somebody say that you uh you're into figure skating. Is that true? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> it's something specific to them that they might want to talk about. Yeah, that's just that is them. um like how you reach out to people for different subjects on the podcast. Right. Talking to people about you know their specific lines of interest it's what shows you care because in order to ask those questions you had to have remembered that oh they know i like led zeppelin or like you know i know we keep referencing work which is it's just, that's just because that's a lot of common uh stories we have together mm -hmm. but one of our workmates uh like you know he played a lot of music and he listened to like van halen a lot uh yeah. and then sadly van halen died later after like i learned about that like maybe like a month or two later and yeah, when i heard that you know you go it's like hey how do you feel like you know because you were a big fan of van halen like just you know showing that you care by remembering you know the qualities and attributes of people mm -hmm. yeah and i guess timing also matters like if you ask him right there and then it's like more important than if you asked like a month later of like oh yeah i forgot to ask this or something um and on the note of just uh caring for networks there is what happens when you neglect to maintain 
a network and that's just where it inevitably kind of drifts off mm-hmm. uh like what is it if um you know and most of the time I hate to say it, it is because of like either geographic location or you're just moving on to like different groups of people right or yeah. what you had in common has now kind of like changed uh mm-hmm. or even worse like worst case scenario is that you've made like a certain action to have tarnished that connection mm-hmm. uh that would be like the worst thing you could do you know right. obviously like just blatantly ignore someone or um you know just to like betray someone's trust and that like trust is like a big thing in terms of keeping your connections like if you want to think of it like with your network there's obviously like your uh you know just like everyone that you know and i think i read some article that says like you can only the human mind can only like remember so many people mm-hmm. uh because of just like maybe it was like 500 like you can only like remember 500 people maybe mm. uh like actually and like remember certain stuff i thought it because, was like 100 like something even more scarce more scarce yeah I don't know. I feel like don't, don't quote me on that, but I don't know. I mean, I guess five hundred's a lot of people, like individually. I guess if it, I guess it just depends if would characters count as people. I don't. Know, that's besides the point. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't know, but uh, like you know, there's just like that wide scope of people, like everybody, and then there's like. You know, everyone kind of in your immediate vicinity that's like closer to you. Then there's like, you know, your friends, your colleagues, yeah. whoever, and like, you know, your family. And then there's like your inner circle where it's right. like, even within your friends and family, there are these people that you like go to. Mm-hmm. For certain situations. Yeah. And I guess and, that's kind of a big talking point I want to get into, if you don't mind. Just kind yeah, of like, sure. kind of focusing on the different types of relationships we have and why it is important to kind of have that diversity, you know, like diversity mm-hmm. of thought and just maybe like diversity of bond, where it's mm-hmm. like some, you know, like I kind of like to think of. A category of I deem important friends and Mm -hmm. where it's like one of my closest friends is just as important as like a certain acquaintance because it's like they're all important to me but like obviously the closer friend is more of a priority and everything that's what sets them apart but it's like this idea of importance where this acquaintance who I might not talk to that often every Mm -hmm. time I do it's like maybe he gives me like insight of like I don't know life advice that really sticks with me so Mm -hmm. even though I'm not like that great of friends with him it's like I value this connection like he's important to me because I am who I am because of him but obviously Mm -hmm. like my closer friends it's like they they supply me with more trust and loyalty and maybe like Mm -hmm. consistency that I needed um maybe certain friends are just good to like you know there's like there's so many different types of friends there's like friends who you only hang out with because they're just fun frankly like you don't tell them Mm -hmm. deep stuff it's not necessarily a shallow connection but like you just you're compatible at having fun together like you enjoy it um right certain friends you're better at working with so for a project you ask them to work with you versus your best friend because you just might not have that good of a working compatibility Mm -hmm. with them um you know it's kind of the same thing with roommates right it's like when you ask your best Mm -hmm. friend to be your roommate and then that ends up horribly (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's because maybe you're not compatible at living together you get sick of each other maybe one person's unkempt and you're like super tidy Mm -hmm. uh 
you know, there's so many different things. Maybe somebody is like you're. I don't know, like he he helps you out with math problems or something, and you are just a good friend to them in return. I mean, a lot of these are almost like I don't want to say trade deals because it sounds heartless when you just kind of say it like no, that. But I mean, it's kind of like what you said, like give and give and take. It's like these are bonds that both parties need to work towards and it's not always like physical trading but like trading as in attention or loyalty or trust or what is it i i forget what i read this from but it was that every kind of relationship that you have can like fall under like a certain category of mm -hmm. either one it's something that you need that you lack um mm -hmm whether or not that's like a personal attribute or whether it's something you can get from someone that you yourself can't uh, like do. Like security uh, or like ability? Like even like um, with like work friends, right? You know, you can't have some, you can't cover your own shift if you want to go out Friday night. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you need someone else. Like you need another person in order to like ha complete your own goals um, right that's a that's a great point jack because it's like i can't rely on my choir friends to cover my shift for me you know no so like that's that's what you kind of need or it's like someone or another instance is like someone that uh not necessarily you want something from but you want to be more like them in certain attributes like and so role model. yeah like in or a mentor yeah, or just like in terms of one quality that they have, like, you know, mm -hmm. maybe they suck at driving, but they're like really good at like, you know, playing a piano and you're like, you want to understand that or whatever. Yeah. Um, maybe you can help with their driving in return. Yeah, exactly. And then that's kind of more of like an exchange. And then there is just the bonds where you've given trust to the other person and they haven't like tarnished it yet and that's what kind of like help creates a closer bond like you know that's what that's what keeps you from like you know the friend that you just have fun with will be fun but like you know they're not going to be as close as the one that like you know maybe you trust with some of your like personal like secrets or whatever right yeah like there's um, confidence and everything and I think there is just kind of, uh, what is it? It's not like using a person for stuff because it's supposed to like, if you're not using these relationships, any. yeah, they're, they're mutually beneficial. But I also think as important it is to like make connections with other people, you need to be self-aware at what level they are. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, or like if I, something's bad, right? Not if something's necessarily bad, but like if, you know, connecting with a person from like complete stranger is like zero to like a hundred being like closest friend would take a bullet for you or like, you know, love your love of your life or whoever that person may be like, you know, you need to understand that that like, you know, some people like yeah they're at like an 80 and then there are some people who are at a 20 but you might think they're at like a 60 if that makes sense like you need to like understand the level of like your like friendships with people like uh with people at work right uh where we work uh when we are there we're all kind of like friends. We're all pals. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we just kind of like talk to each other. And that in that kind of relationship, it's we're both trying to get through the work day. Mm -hmm. And so we're making it more enjoyable by talking to each other, by mingling, you know, just uh, shooting the shit. But, and this is kind of like a more specific instance. Uh, there was a night where I knew I had to close 
So like, you know, meaning like I had to stay there till, you know, the whole store was like closed down and there was no more business. But the person who was supposed to close couldn't fulfill that. And so someone else had to stay and do it. And that person was you. Uh, but just like, I don't know, noticing in terms of like looking at the group, like, you know, you're all friends, but like at the end of the day, we're there to like comfort each other through the work day. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as like, you know, an opportunity where it's like, Oh, one of you needs to like stay and work longer. Right. Immediately everyone's goals, like immediately, you know, the whole comforting through the work day, that's kind of like sometimes the limit of like a relationship because they go, well, I don't want to work longer. Right. So, you know, point. like, like the kind of like limitations of what, um, you know, the current relationship that you have with a person. Right. Um, <clears throat> and to kind of go off of your like scale, I actually like that metaphor a lot of like zero to 100 I think that kind of goes along with my idea of like a priority of friends, like where all of them are essentially ranked on that priority level, just because you need to do that. You need to figure out which people are closer, which people can you rely on, because we need people to rely on sometimes. So Mm -hmm. it's not it's not exactly. Well, maybe it's a bit selfish to say, like, okay, well, this guy is like a 20, but like I know it's weird to, like, rank people, but it's not like you're ranking people in terms of, like, oh, this guy's better than you. It's just, it's all about your bond and your No, yeah, that's just, like, you have, like, uh, what is it? It, Like, it's not bold to say that, like, you know, you might have, like, a closer relationship or, like, bond with me than you do, like, Timmy in, like, chemistry class or whatever, who's, like, talk to you like twice and done the lab with you once. Right. Right. Like, you know, like those kind of people where you're like, Oh, you know, of them, you both know of each other. You've maybe talked a little bit, but outside of that, like, you know, I've never actually met someone named Timmy. Like never, never, no, like never in a, like my circle of, family never like friends never never even friends of friends like i've just never heard that name other than fairly odd parents (laughs) that name doesn't exist jack who knows maybe you'll meet one in college (laughs) yeah maybe maybe you'll listen to this episode and be like dude what the what the what the the hell man (laughs) discrimination right here um you know timmy's gonna be your best man just you wait God, that would be some really weird foreshadowing, wouldn't it be? <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, but even still, like, even though you rank people, it's like people are also good for different things. Like, maybe you want that friend to just kind of, like, what if something oh, yeah. happened to you? Like, maybe somebody passed in your family, and maybe you're not really ready to tell your like closest confidants. So, like. Maybe you just need a day of fun to let go. Maybe that's when you hang out with your friend who might be like a 50 priority level. But like, you just need fun, you know? Yeah, like, again, it's like everyone has, uh, was it, some type of, like, you know, you might go to someone for relationship advice, but they might not be the life of the party. Mm -hmm. and then you know same goes uh for the other way around you know you you know someone is like super fun to hang out and be around with but at the end of the day you can't really get too serious with them yeah like everyone it's weird to say that like everyone has like a role but like more there are people better equipped to like handle uh you know, you're like, there are people better equipped to handle what you want. You're not going to go to a skydiver and ask him to fix your toilet. Right. You're going to like, 
like, you know, people just have their own, like, you know, expertise uh, when it comes to you in that sense. Mm. Um, but, um, yeah. I know where to fix your toilet. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Maybe. I mean, maybe, if it, maybe, it maybe if like, it's a toilet on a plane, maybe. Maybe he went to trade school, Jack. Maybe he did. Maybe that's why he became a skydiver, because he fixed toilets, and then he's like, you know what? I want to skydive. I want to live. Right. Um. Mm. So, yeah, do you think, since we're uh, kind of at the hour mark, do you think, do you think we covered everything about networking? Um, if I had to like, just kind of round it off, I like, you know, to maybe people who don't, uh, maybe know how to make like the first step Mm -hmm. or, you know, just like the value of getting these networks is that it is hard to make the first step, but if no one does, then you might just miss a connection uh like you know a good friend you know possibly like you know a significant other uh maybe even uh it might land you a job uh you know because maybe they're so and so's uh you know son or daughter and they're like oh yeah i could totally hook you up uh all of those opportunities like could be at your fingertips if you just keep making it a daily practice to try and reach out to others and to get to learn and understand them and like what their goals are and ask Mm -hmm. good questions. That's mainly the thing is that there's so many, you know, it's, it's easy to be bold and to like go, Hey, to like a random person like it doesn't take that much effort to do that Mm -hmm. in a sense but it's harder to try to actually understand a person to ask good questions um to really put effort into it yeah and i think to add on to that just with one thing to maybe bring it home you have to want it no yeah you, you know what I mean by that? Yeah, like, it's not something that you can just, you could casually do it if you want, but, like, to make, to, like, put an actual effort into it will show more results than mm-hmm. if you just kind of do it on and off. Uh, but, yeah, uh, you need to want it. And at the end of, you know, you need to make that first step. It's hard. I know it's been hard. And, you know, you could think, well, why isn't anyone reaching out to me? You know, that's kind of like a sort of, you know, well, why you can make that first step, you know, to depend on other people to give you something that you want. Yeah, like if that's something you want, if you want people to come to you, it's like, why not be that guy, you know? Yeah. Um, You know, kind of like, you can't expect other people to understand what you want. If you want more companionship or you want to find, you know, like that connection, you can't expect other people to like read your mind and know, oh, you know, Casey, he wants to like hang out. It's like, no you have to make the effort to do it and that's one step closer to fulfilling that need than if you were to just sit there doing nothing right yeah so yeah i think that's a that's a great conclusion for this episode um thanks so much jack for coming on here man of course and I wish you luck on your new your new start, your new journey in South Carolina. 
Well, thank you. Thank you for having me, Casey. Yeah. And this has been the networking episode to all those listening. Try to try to make a new friend today. Huh? Consider that to be the, the culmination challenge for you. So anyway, thanks everybody for listening. And I'll see you guys next time.